measure health what would you look for right so somebody comes into your clinic or, or just somebody you see so what would you look to say this person is healthy in terms of an old older person uh, so i think it might be useful just to to go through this as an example so let's take my dad for example who's approaching 60 so if if i saw him in the clinic i would want to know what he does for a job I'd want to know what his lifestyle is like, you know, whether he's exercising, whether he's got a good diet, what his social group is. Um, and I'd want to understand sort of his, his mental health aspect as well, because that's such a massive role in our, in our own health. I'd want to know if there's any concerning features or symptoms that he's got. So I'd want to know, you know, is he, does he have chest pain when he exercises? Does he get short of breath more than usual when he exercises? Um, is there any strange you know, tummy pains that he's, that he's getting, is there any bleeding when he passes a bowel motion, anything like that, that's a big red flag. And then I'd examine him and I'd listen into his chest. I'm looking for any heart murmurs, which can indicate signs of um, heart valve issues. I'd check his heart rate, his blood pressure. Um, those are kind of the, the main things. And then we'd do some general blood work. And with the blood work, I'm looking at a full blood count. I'd want to have a look at his um, urea and creatinine to look at his kidney function, his, his salt, so, you know, sodium, potassium, um, his cholesterol, and I'd also do his HbA1c. Um, and given that he's approaching 60, I'd also have a discussion with him about whether we want to test for prostate cancer. And, and that's kind of the, the baseline. That, that's, for, for most people, that's all they need. So, so there's, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of people online who will say you need this test you need that test and you need to do this and that and the next thing but when it when it actually comes down to it most of the time when you're doing tests if you're not doing the appropriate test you can you can often get what's called false positive so a test will come back and it's slightly outside the normal range and that can create a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress for patients that's needless so it's called a pre-test probability so if, if you're doing a test and you don't actually think that this test is going to be that useful and it comes back positive, it's very difficult then to know what to do with that test. Whereas if, say, my dad had, um, he was coming into the clinic and he was fatigued and he was starting to put on weight um, and his, his face was rather expressionless, I would be thinking about his thyroid. And that's a very good reason then to test for thyroid functions. But for people that don't have symptoms, you know, doing all of these other tests, I, most of the time, it actually causes more harm than good. There's also the philosophy that, you know, like things don't show up until too late. So you, sh you should be testing for some of these things. It, it, so absolutely, but it depends on what you're testing for. So for example, right. say with my dad, one of the, the, there's, since he's male, one of the, well, actually since he's approaching 60, one of the things that we do is bowel cancer screening. So there are certain screening programs that have very good evidence behind them that we should be doing that, so that detect things before symptoms appear. And there's very good pathways for that. So bowel cancer is one of them. For women, it's things like um, mammograms for breast cancer or cervical smears for cervical cancer. Um, there's, yeah, there, there's many particular screening programs that make a lot of sense that people can do to catch disease early. But a lot of other tests, again, let's take thyroid as an example, unless there's a good reason to test for, a thy for thyroid, most of the time it creates angst and anxiety that doesn't actually need to be there. You mentioned uh, cholesterol would be one thing you would look at. You would use a standard cholesterol panel and can I, you know, which one, HDL, LDL, so what are you looking for for there? Yeah, so I've, I've actually just published a video about oh. statins and cholesterol and it created a bit of debate let's say in the in the comment section and short answer is yes i do do a, a standard blood panel uh with cholesterol there's no fancy tests that that i do and the reason for that at the end of the day we're measuring cholesterol to assess the health of our blood vessels and we want to try and prevent you know plaque or calcium buildup in our blood vessels as much as possible so that we can prevent heart attacks and strokes that's the big one. So it's not just cholesterol that contributes to poor blood vessel health. It's things like inflammation, um, diabetes, um, blood pressure, 
many different things. Even mental health comes into it. So there are different calculators that that we use in clinical practice that pulls together all of that patient's clinical record, as well as you know their um, kidney function tests and cholesterol and blood pressure and everything, and pr- produces a score to work out, is this person sitting in front of me at high risk of having a heart attack or not? And if they're at very low risk of having a heart attack, all we do is emphasize a great diet and regular exercise. That's all we do. When it comes, but but if there's a slightly higher risk of having a heart attack, um, and they've got high cholesterol for it, for an example, one of the things that I strongly advise my patients to do is a CT calcium score. So that's a scan of the blood vessels around the heart. Again, we're trying to figure out is there any calcium buildup or plaque buildup in those blood vessels, because even if someone's got borderline high cholesterol, if they've if they're blood vessels are pristine there's no point in trying to in trying to give that patient a statin all we should be doing is emphasizing a great diet and regular exercise however if we do find that that person's um, blood vessels have got a lot of calcium buildup in them and they've they've got borderline cholesterol then yes it does make sense to intervene at that point alongside diet and exercise but prescribe them a statin so what you're describing is a very uh, like proactive approach to medicine. I mean, is that exceptional? Because most medicine appears to be kind of reactive, right? You, you wait until they have a heart attack and then try and fix it. It's interesting because in New Zealand, we've got a public health system. So most of our healthcare is paid for by the government. So because of that, the incentives are very much in line for prevention medicine. Because, you know, the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff is extremely expensive. So the the financial incentives are for prevention as opposed to, you know, throwing a lot of money at hospitals. So there's a big drive in in my work at prevention. So trying to prevent heart attacks and strokes, trying to emphasize good diet and regular exercise, making sure that we, you know, catch bowel cancers before they, uh, when they're really, really treatable and it's, it's easy just to remove a small polyp um, trying to catch, you know, breast cancers and cervical cancers, um, trying to prevent, you know, in, in older people, the bones get a bit weaker and there's specific reasons when we do scans of the bones to see if we need to do anything else to strengthen those bones to prevent uh, fractures. So in New Zealand, at least, there's many, yeah, the, the financial incentives are there for prevention as opposed to the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. You would think the UK should be somewhat similar i mean they're all they have a very similar healthcare system but yeah i've actually worked in the uk um in one of the hospitals there this was dating back i think in 2017 um and it is quite a similar system um i've never actually worked in general practice there though so i'm not too sure the the pathways that they've got there but in new zealand at least there's a massive focus on prevention as opposed to you know letting things go before it's too late 